permission to speak freely? <laughs> <laughs> I don't, honestly, I, I use that. So it's actually a military term. Uh, it's not really a technical military term, but in the military, uh, which I did for a little under 12 years, uh, it, it's a way to talk to your boss and know you're not going to get fired or know you're not going to get in trouble. And it's when you really have something nasty to say about him or someone else in which you potentially can get fired and say, sir, permission to speak freely. And he's usually, or she's looking at you, he's like, oh, should I? Should I? Um, but I actually use that, my wife and I use that too, to where, you know, sometimes it's the, the truth that needs to be told and you hope you don't have to pay the consequences <laughs> for what you're saying. So, again, thank you. Uh, Matt is just an amazing inspiration, just his knowledge and, and the minimal amount of leadership knowledge that I had in, in training and teaching uh, pales in comparison to him. So, again, pick up the book if you haven't read it. I, I guarantee you there'll be some, some great stories you won't forget. Um, for me, again, I'm from Pasco. Uh, you know, 12 years of service, it, it was amazing uh, just to serve my country, really understand uh, why we live here in America, you know, the most free country in the world. And yes, we have a lot of problems, yes, we have a lot of issues, but I don't believe there's any other country I'd rather live uh, than in this country. Um, and for me, it's, it's about overcoming obstacles, but working towards a goal, working towards a purpose. Um, I remember uh, waking up at 2.45 one morning, um, so I'm going to do a triathlon, uh, and I had to wake up that early because the race got started an hour and a half earlier because the forecaster said it's going to be 105 the next day. Um, and the weatherman, after he says 105, he says, I advise none of you go outside, and if, especially if you do, don't do anything physical. Well, this is the day that I chose to do an Ironman. Um, a, little, a little physicality involved, um, so load my bicycle in the truck, travel from Spokane to Coeur d'Alene, get checked in, hear the national anthem, hear the cannon boom, jump in the water, finish 2.4 miles of swimming, just a little, little relaxing swim in the pool, get on the bicycle, start spinning my legs away, 112 miles. At uh, this time, it's, it's nearing 104, 105, ambient heat off the ground, around 135 degrees. It's, it's absolute misery. I heard bicycle tires popping. Uh, I remember people saying it's absolute mayhem out there. The largest and highest did not finishes in Ironman history was this day. Uh, but for me, I was motivated. I, I stayed in shape. Uh, but just three miles into the little jog I had to do, I think it's 26.2 miles. Um, I think they call it a marathon, not sure. Um, I just, my body began to overheat I, and I, I truly want to give up. And I couldn't see the end in sight. Uh, and I had just, I had given it my all. Um, and I rewind several years, you know, after graduating from the military academy, my first unit was at Fort Lewis, Washington, married my beautiful high school sweetheart, and then I found myself in Missoula, Iraq, fighting to rebuild the country. Every day, uh, we were attacked, uh, you know, trying to do what we were called to do. Uh, remember losing my boss, the man I reported to every morning, every night, uh, was, was killed along with 21 other men and women uh, when someone walked into the cafeteria and blew himself up. Just talk about tragic, talk about severe, um, but we had and, and knew the purpose in front of us was why we were doing what we were doing. Uh, and six months pass, I now find myself in front of a suspicious vehicle. The back of the car is lower than the front. Given the rules of engagement, you can't just shoot people because you're scared. We had every ability, um, but it was always doing the right thing looking at the Army values as our forefront of, of how to treat others and, 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 and treat them with kindness and respect. So I yell at him to get out of his vehicle. Uh, he raises his hands up in the, off the steering wheel. Again, it's just head was buzz, face was buzz, gray shirt down to his uh, wrists, and a silver opal, the back of the car lower than the front. Man, I, again, I'm standing in a striker vehicle, got body armor on, bully, bulletproof glasses. You know, I look like a Rambo, at least, at least I feel like I am. Uh, uh, you know, feel very protected, medals all the way up to my chest. I, I felt, again, protected. Uh, yell at him again, and he raises his hands off the steering wheel and then lets his foot off the brake. That's when I shoot two front rounds in front of his vehicle, and then, boom, my world go, goes black. Um, you know, waking up in Walter Reed Army Medical Center uh, when I was at the height of my life, newly married, I was in the best shape of my life, I had every goal, every ambition to, to solve the world's problems, if not my own. 
everyone else's. And now my, I was just absolutely devastated. Uh, blind the rest of my life, losing both my eyes, partially temporarily paralyzed the right side of my body. Uh, I, I literally wanted to give up. Uh, I went into deep depression. I didn't understand what my purpose in life was even for, especially if God allowed something to happen like this. And being raised as a Christian, it, it, it really is it's crazy to say that's what I questioned most was my faith in God. Uh, but it was my loving wife, my the family, friends that just continue to surround me with love that I said, hey, it is about forgiveness. It is about looking forward and moving forward with any and every step that you have the ability to uh, and do it with that love and grace. And I had to forgive. And once I made that decision, um, I began my recovery. Um, became the Army's first active duty blind officer, which is amazing to continue to serve. Uh, being an infantryman, they never gave me a rifle back. I don't I don't know why. Um, <laughs> uh, but for me, it was, it was truly just living with a purpose and living uh, with grace and love. Uh, and that's where I found my last duty station was at Gonzaga University, uh, where I medically retired after a little under 12 years of service and now I found myself uh, signing up for an Ironman. Um, you know where I started the story is uh, I'm blind and it was my brother-in-law who I was trained with that I had to trust. It was he that had to trust me that I was working out, that I was swimming, that I was running, that I was uh, getting getting on the spin bike to make sure my legs and my cardiovascular was in shape. It was that dependence upon each other that we really had to trust in each other. It was his truck that I loaded my tandem up into. Uh, he was he, he that drove me to Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. His arm that I held to the beach to listen to the national anthem as tears are going down my face. Just realizing that the amount of lives that have been lost, the amount of men and women that are still fighting for our country was just amazing. Uh, and there was his arm that I held as I jumped in the water. He tapped my left leg, tapped my right leg. that told me to go left, right. Just imagine a little swim around the middle leg, not knowing where he's going. Uh, it was just me on the back of my tandem, spinning my legs, hoping he was pedaling also. Uh, but you see, he was also steering, shifting gears, braking, making sure we weren't, uh, you know, drafting off of other people, making sure we had water. It was amazing just how the team and the effort worked tirelessly together. Uh, but it's now me on the run who's wanting to quit. It's me who's who has no energy, has just the feeling of uselessness and purposelessness. Uh, but again, it was that friend who, who put his hand on my back, prayed for me, my wife, the family and friends and loved ones just cheered me on. Now, after only 13 miles left, you know, this massive long race, they knew like by the time that we had started, they knew I wouldn't finish. As my wife who saw my pale face, wasn't drinking water, doing everything you're not supposed to do in the heat, I was checking all those blocks. Um, and she looked at me and yelled over the crowd. She said, Scotty, you can't give up. You have to keep going. You have to understand you're not doing this for yourself. You're doing it for the men and women who, who didn't make it back, the ones that, that are gone. But more importantly, you're doing it for the men and women who did but are still fighting, so you better hurry up. And it's, and it's at times like that you don't like that your spouse is right. <laughs> and for some reason, we cut off at least over an hour split that second half of that marathon. And that last quarter mile was one of the best, amazing quarter miles I had ever ran down Sherman Avenue. As a crowd is roaring and cheering. Uh, and Iron Man Mike, as he yells out, Scott Smiley, you know, you are an Iron Man, he got it wrong. It should have been Scotty, Andy, Tiffany, Tiffany who's kicking me out of bed, <laughs> get on the <laughs> treadmill, <laughs> get, you know, get a workout. Like, it's the family and the loved ones that cheered me on that gave me the motivation. It's the men and women who fought and are still fighting to make this country a free country. Those are the people he should have said, you are an Iron Man. And so just in conclusion, is like, it's about living life with purpose every day. Waking up with a smile, loving your family, the, your, your work, your job, finding purpose in life, that you live with nothing but, you, you live with a purpose every day. Not giving up, not thinking that the tragedy, the, the, the road ahead is too hard, but living with purpose and, and, and surrounding yourself with a team. And I know if we do it, we're gonna make the Tri-Cities, of course, Pasco, <laughs> Franklin County, Benton County, this state, this country, the, the best in the world, this world. So again, I can't thank you enough. Um, just to note, the book does not include the Iron Man. So there are a lot of other cool stories, some I shared, uh, but it's written more of a novelistic uh, reference. So Doug Crandall, uh, Matt and I's friend, 
help write it, but it's written in a way that really, um, it's for all ages, but I always tell people it's more of a love story. It's not just a love story between me and my wife, but it's a love story with me and God, Tiffany and God, uh, and just the love of our country, that we should always work with a purpose and with love just to support what we believe in. So I can't thank you at all enough for coming here. If you didn't get a book, I'm sure I can sell another one, and, and Matt would, would love to sell a few more. So can't thank you all enough.